there's a way to make an entrance. <laughs> My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Prestige Pawnbrokers plays its part in a privileged world. There's in excess of a million pounds worth of jewellery there. Oh, wow. Helping the asset rich. It could be as much as half a million quid. Swap their high-priced possessions. Yeah, I'm loving it now. For quick cash. I'm in the business of making money, whether it's cars, trains, boats, jewellery, watches, whatever it is, I want it. With shops in London... Well, I've got a feeling you're looking for 20 plus. Yes, I am. ..and affluent Surrey... <laughs> ..agreeing eye-popping sums... The asking price is 1.8 million euros. How much? ..is all in a day's work. Good. Hi. This time... I've only been here 10 minutes, so I'm down a £1,000. High revs... My engagement ring. Uh, Therefore, surely my money. High society. Well, we've had quite a few famous people. Sir Anthony Hopkins and Brad Pitt. And high risk. I need that money by Tuesday. Welcome to the world of posh porn. Porn shop boss James Constantino likes to be across every transaction. Your 50 grand isn't a problem. In fact, I can double it. Brilliant. Thank you very much, James. I really Fantastic. appreciate it. But with three shops spread across London and Surrey... Since we probably offer you about 1,500. Hello. James has to rely on his carefully picked team to close many of his deals for him. Everyone is a specialist in the field and everyone research, research, research to get it right. What we don't want to do is overvalue on something. What sort of money is he looking for, do you I know? have no idea. You tell me. You know, James trusts us. He knows that we can make the right decision, otherwise we wouldn't be here. He has got major trust issues. As in, he doesn't trust anyone. Well, I'd like to say that the CCTV was about quality control, but a little bit is probably spying. Sorry? What was that? Keep an eye on your little empire. In London's Hatton Garden, handbag expert Claudia has had an inquiry from some well-to-do friends. They're a lord and lady, and um, she was just saying that she's got a few bits and in her wardrobes and designer handbags that she doesn't even she doesn't even look at these days. There's also a guitar which is um, also signed by all the members of the Rolling Stones. So I kind of suggested to her you can sell them, cash them in, and get yourself a new, brand new handbag and you know a current one. So I think she liked the idea of that. Near Ascot in Berkshire, high-end property consultant Ben and PR guru to the rich and famous Rainer. Hi, darling. Hello, baby. You look lovely. You've been to the hairdressers again. Mm. Live in a duplex apartment in an exclusive mansion. <laughs> this is our lounge, and I love it because it's a great place to relax in, but it's also a reflection of Ben and I. It's very Hollywood style. Dear Monty, crown for the queen. <laughs> ben and Raina became Lord and Lady six years ago. I'm going to give you your lordship mug, all right, because I'm not sure if you're really a lord or a mug. Well, possibly the latter. I love being treated like a lady by my darling husband. She's spoiled rotten. Sometimes she has to pinch herself, don't you, darling? Make sure <laughs> it isn't all a dream. Such a good wife, aren't I? So obedient. Not. The first time we met was many years ago in Stringfellows in London. Before it was a lap dancing club. Yeah, Raina wasn't doing any <laughs> moonlighting at the time. We sort of met up again more recently, about eight years ago, and then the rest is history. We sort of, mm. like, fell in love. <laughs> Five years after reuniting, the couple got married. Ben proposed to me on a private island in Phuket, which was very romantic. Their three-day wedding in Marbella received a lot of attention. Ta-da! We've got lots of interesting articles in here from when Ben and I got married because people are interested in the fact that there's such an age difference and it's a role reversal, older woman, younger guy. I'm actually 17 years older than Ben. I don't mind admitting it, because I'm sort of actually proud of it. I'm 55. 
people seem to find that fascinating and say we thought that he was older than you or we can't even see the age difference so which is lovely of course for me Raina runs her own company representing celebrities and organizing global private parties for high-end clients I'm not going to name drop but I will uh, there's me and Peter Andre there's me and Gino De Campo Bobby Davro who's a great friend of mine. Looking the part is important for Raina, so she's decided her designer bag collection needs updating. I love this bag. It's white Chanel. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. The bag was a gift from Ben several years ago, but sadly, totally impractical. I don't know what he paid for it. This is stunning Hermes Birkin, classic bag, beautiful, beautiful, but I have a black one and I've used the black one to death. I really don't use this and if I get a good price for both bags, I would obviously like to buy a new bag. For the two bags, I'd like to realise £6,000. We'll see. I need to go shopping. Ben also wants to treat himself. I have always quite fancied a fat boy. I will just clarify that that is uh, a model of Harley Davidson and not some weird fetish. He wants to sell his Rolling Stones signed guitar, bought at a charity auction last year. It was apparently from a, an official signing that the Stones did uh, at Wembley. What was interesting about this to me was that it was actually signed by every member, including Bill Wyman, who's obviously long since left the band, so I, I would hope making it that bit more special. In terms of the cost, I can tell you that it was into the thousands, not the hundreds. And what I'd take for it, if it's anything less than 5,000, I think, in all honesty, I'd be keeping it and hanging it on the wall. As well as buying and loaning against big ticket items. Ed, is Leon there, please? It's James Constantino. James also sells high-end assets for his clients. I'll leave it with you and I'll come back to you maybe on Monday or something. The wheeling and dealing part of the business and bringing buyers to the table is my strength and that's what I enjoy most. One of the items James is trying to sell for a client is a World War II airplane. Oh, I love it. And he might have found a buyer. It's a Tiger Moth. I've had this plane here for a while, I haven't shown you it, but... They're lovely. Do you like that? I really like it, yeah, I love those ones where there's one in the front and the back. I've always wanted to go in one of them even though I don't like turbulence. Do you know who that is, didn't you, there? Yes, I do, actually. That is the woman who sang um, White Cliffs of Dover. Vera Lynn. Do you know who she looks like? That is Vera Lynn. Yeah, but she doesn't look like Vera Lynn there, does she? She looks like that woman from Last of the Summer Wine. Hey. Have you watched I've it? I've never watched that. How do you? Jesus, you've been watching no, Last just, of the uh, Summer Wine, haven't you? I just got you? a little glimpse of it. No, don't try and make it. You've only way caught a glimpse of it. That's <laughs> out of the corner of my eye. You've... But, uh, I've you've... just pictured you in your slippers. Anyway, I've just had a phone call from someone who wants to go down there and have a look at it. Oh, brilliant. This fella's really keen and he's already brilliant. mentioned some figures to me. And he's got a lot of planes already in his in his collection and this he thinks will fit the bill for him oh, he's looking fantastic. for one of these. it does look brilliant i love it james's potential buyer for the tiger moth plane is 69 year old mike from west sussex i've been really tied up with this brad pitt thing mike owns an aviation film company which he runs from an aerodrome in Surrey. We keep aeroplanes specifically for film and TV use, and we've been involved with uh, all the Bond movies for the last 30 years, right back to Octopussy. This plane has been used for lots of films since we've had it. We've had quite a few famous people on it as well, Sir Anthony Hopkins and Brad Pitt, uh, Dustin Hoffman, and on uh, one occasion we had Ronnie Corbett actually up in one of these lockers. The guy was coming along saying, people are always leaving stuff in their lockers, and he opened it and he's in there, you know. And he was 80 and they actually got him into one of these lockers. <laughs> That's great, the Chinook. Assisted by qualified pilot Anita. Well, that's a treat, isn't it? Seeing a Chinook going up and down the runway. Yeah. Wow, beautiful. Mike started his business in 1979, nine years after becoming a commercial airline pilot. That was the first plane he flew commercially, the DC-3. 
that's all I wanted to do was to uh, to be a pilot, you know. And when I eventually became an airline pilot, I realised it was a horrible job. <laughs> it was a dead man's shoes job. He made more in a day and a half filming than he did as a, as a year as an airline pilot, so that was that, really. <laughs> now Mike's considering expanding his portfolio with the plain pawn shop Boss James has for sale. But it won't be the first Tiger Moth Mike has ever bought. The Tiger Moth was the first aeroplane that I ever owned or uh, flew for that matter. And uh, I do have a lot of sentimental sort of uh, memories of, of the aeroplane. Well, this is the receipt, which was actually in 1965. The actual cost of the plane was £600 in those days. I used to earn £4 a week, and um, I earn a, bit, earn a bit more than that now. Things have moved on. <laughs> the price tag on the Tiger Moth James is selling is £70,000. I can't make an offer until I've seen it, but I'm sure we would be able to put it in as part of the collection if it's the right aeroplane and it's the right money. So we'll wait to see when we get there. Selling this plane would be a real coup for James and the pawn shop. But on inspection, will Mike think it's worth the £70,000 asking price? Average loan given by a pawnbroker in the UK is £400, but for Boss James and his team... Right, Lawrence, this client has just left this with us. He's looking for 15 to 20 grand as a loan. OK, no problem. Five and six-figure sums are regularly requested. Today, James has received two large diamond rings his clients are hoping to cash in. Joe, you like yellow stones, didn't you? No. What made you say that? Well, cos there's one I need to get rid of. No, I can't be buying it. Well, you might fancy this for yourself. You never know. Uh, I don't like that. But that one, you like that? Oh, my God. No-brainer. Oh, get on that chubby finger. <laughs> you will fit. You might need a bit of WD-40. Oh, my God, that's so nice. It's mm. massive. Now yeah, you've got to go up and and get it off. The white and yellow diamond rings belong to Harley Davidson enthusiasts Paul and Vicky. Bloody nice day for a bike ride, darling. I'll tell you what, the scene is absolutely brilliant around here. Military man Paul and sales executive Vicky are both 47 and live in Andover. It's quite nice to have a hobby that we can do together, but at the same time apart. Ha! Bastard, you, you drive like a girl. <laughs> he doesn't have to listen to me while we're out on his uh, bike. Nagging in my ear. And I've got some fairly good hand signals that I can give him <laughs> if need be. Paul is a lieutenant colonel and has been in the army for 27 years. We've got uh, Northern Ireland, uh, then we've got Yugoslavia, we've done a couple of tours there, Kosovo, uh, then there's Iraq, um, and then Afghanistan, where I've been a couple of times. Very fortunate that it's taken me pretty much all four corners of the globe. The couple have been together for 10 years and married for eight. I was probably away more often than I was here, quite honestly, wasn't I? Yes, you were. Yeah. It can be very, very lonely when Paul's away. I spray his aftershave on the pillows so that at night, in the dark, it smells like he's actually there with me. He actually came back from one seven-month deployment and I'd used a whole bottle. Very particular about my bed. Everything has to be perfectly in line. The stripes have to be straight. And it's not just her divan that Vicky is meticulous about. Look, look at the spots. Oh, dear. It's fine, it'll come off. Really? Tell that to my chrome. It'll come out easily. The bike is a money pit because the possibilities are genuinely endless. endless yeah. I want to change all the cabling. I want new grips, new foot pegs. Finally, I want to change the wheels. I want chrome turbine wheels. Those chrome turbine wheels are about £1,000 each, so hence why there was a requirement to, um, to try and get rid of some of our stuff to make sure that it's affordable. And what they've picked to sell, most wives would never dream of parting with. The white diamond ring was an engagement ring I bought for Vicky uh, when we were in Florida. 
Oh, look, there's a hot air balloon the ride. The balloon ride. Wow, I remember that. We didn't actually go with the intention of buying an engagement ring. No. Um, he pointed to the Diamond Centre and I frog-marched him over the road. <laughs> yeah. For a look. And then quickly whipped the credit card out of my pocket to pay for the diamond she wanted. The white ring cost $22,000 at the time. US dollars. Yeah. The, the exchange rate at the time was about two for one, wasn't it? Yeah, just under two for one, yeah. I haven't worn it since we got married. I have a, a big wedding ring um, and I can't wear another ring on same finger. the same finger. We still know we're married. I don't see it as a great issue, as long as, no. as, long as Vicky doesn't, because it probably means more to her than it does to me, quite frankly. It really doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> And the other ring was a two and a half carat yellow diamond ring. It's a nice colour yellow, yeah. which are apparently more valuable than white. No idea. But mm. I wouldn't have a clue. And it's another ring that's just been sat around, kicking around. I couldn't even tell you where we got it. Yeah. For both rings, Paul and Vicky would like around £15,000, which should more than cover Vicky's Harley overhaul. And if it do get a you know, good bit of money out of these items then who knows i might be able to she might let me upgrade i say she might let me upgrade my bike the point that paul seems to be missing <laughs> is that it's my engagement ring but I, I, therefore surely my money but i bought the engagement ring for me okay. so therefore it's mine in london hello james speaking Claudia's friends, Lord Ben and Lady Rayner, have brought in their designer handbags for appraisal. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, you look gorgeous, both of you. Hi. Take a seat. <laughs> I'm good. So, tell me. Yes, yeah, so... So that's um, the Chanel. All right, OK. Well, this is nice, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, they're so desirable, these ones, really. Yeah. So I've got another... Goody oh, here. Oh, lovely, the Hermes. Yeah. Which I really like. OK. Um, That's nice, isn't it? What I'll do, then, is, if it's all right, I'll keep them here and yeah. do a little bit of work on them, just see what they're going for second-hand. I like to call it vintage as opposed vintage. to second-hand. <laughs> I <on>. like that. <laughs> if the price is right, <laughs> Claudia. Yeah, of course. If of the course. price is right. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely handbags, which I'm quite impressed with, condition-wise, they're fantastic. The fact that the Chanel has the authenticity card and they both have their original dust covers, easy to resell. So I'll be quite pleased to sort of work on that a little bit and then make them an offer. Yeah, if we can try and keep it this way up. The couple are also hoping to cash in on a guitar Ben bought, signed by the Rolling Stones. Oh, wow. That's Gracious, amazing. That? Yeah. They've all signed it down the side of the guitar. The unusual thing being it was also signed by Bill Wyman, who oh, really? uh, obviously long since left, so oh, wow, that's made it a bit amazing, more, bit more unusual, it? hopefully. It's got a certificate of authenticity, obviously. Right, yeah. it, 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 it all sounded genuine, and hopefully it is. So how much do you think you're looking at for, for this guitar? If it was 5,000 or more, yeah. then, you know, I'll think about it. But if okay. it was less than that, put it on the wall with the rest of the memorabilia. It's nice. If it's less than that, it can go in the loo. <laughs> <laughs> Or down the loo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Claudia. Claudia. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome. Speak to you guys See soon. You soon. The look. guitar needs to be checked out, but will it be good news for Ben after the appraisal? Bye. Thanks. Seventy percent of the pawn shop's loans are against jewellery. I think we can do three thousand one hundred pounds. Okay. But not every deal goes perfectly and stock manager Joy's discovered a problem with a loan given on some rings eight months ago. OK, this is a bit worry. You are right, James? Yeah. Right, I think um, this pledge is a bit over -lent. We lent £2,500, but really the maximum on one of the rings should be about £500, and I think the other one is probably the max of... Um, 250. So it should have been a 750 loan. Yeah. And we've lent 2,500. Oh, yes. Oh my lord. That's severely wrong. That's not even a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Cheers, thanks. I'm not happy about it. I'm a bit peeved, to put it lightly. I've travelled an hour to be here and I've only been here 10 minutes and I'm down a thousand pounds. What I try to achieve at the end of the day is to be up, not down. I don't understand it. We've all got a lot of experience between us. That shouldn't be happening. 
Whilst James employs specialists to deal with the sparkly assets that come in... For the necklace, we can offer £275. ..there's certain items he likes to handle personally. All right, lovely. Well, I'll see you Thursday. Lovely. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Bye. That was Adrian, who's coming down with his Merc. I love taking these calls on the motor vehicles because I understand them. Um, and uh, for me, it's, uh, it's easy. It's a no-brainer. The SL500 convertible Mercedes... More rain. Just what we wanted. ..belongs to 63-year-old Adrian, who lives in Salisbury. From the age of 17, I've always liked nice cars. I managed to buy a Ferrari before I was 50, a Ferrari 355 convertible, which is like nothing else to drive. Some people say it's better than sex. Um, you'd have to drive one to answer that. Self-made man Adrian is originally from the Isle of Wight, where he made his fortune. I've always been an entrepreneur, even from my school days. It's one of those things I think you either got or you haven't got. And people say, oh, you've been lucky. Well, you haven't been lucky. You make your own luck in life. By the time he was 18, Adrian owned his own second-hand car business. The largest site I had was one acre, which would hold 80 to 100 cars. I was relatively a big fish in a small pond. But you learn something later on in life, that material things are not everything. Been on my own for quite a little while. In the December of 2000, I met somebody, married her in 2001. And everything seemed rosy. Yeah, I moved to Florida in uh, November 2002. We had everything for a happy retirement. What more could you want? No sooner we're there and she's kicking off. Six months after being there, she decides that she's going to file for divorce. I lost 95% of what I'd worked for in my life. Came back and all I had with me was a hold all with my closing. I had nothing. Come on. Come on. He now buys and sells metal and rents a two-up, two-down terrace that he shares with his cat, Ash. He's great company. He's a good little chap. Faithful. I think a lot more faithful than people. Do you want to go out? <laughs> but living in Salisbury with Ash is no longer enough. Can I have an orange juice and lemonade? No ice, please. Yeah. I've now got to the age of 63. I don't see any future at all staying in the UK. And I'm moving to South America to live. And uh, it will be a one-way ticket. Adrian is hoping to make the move to Colombia off the back of a scrap metal deal he's set up. But he needs cash fast. Basically, I'm looking to raise £8,000 uh, against the collateral in the mirror. And that eight, I would have turned into 20. Still not a vast amount of money to go out there with, but far better than going out there with, like, ten grand. I need that money by Tuesday, because that's the only way I can increase the small amount of capital I actually have got. His fresh start now hinges on James and a speedy £8,000 loan. At Hatton Garden, James has entrusted gemologist Michael to appraise motorbike enthusiasts Paul and Vicky's white and yellow diamond rings. The way that we look at yellow diamonds and colour diamonds in general is you know, we want there to be as much natural, bright colour as possible. The brighter it is, the more yellow it is, the better. The yellow colour on this diamond is quite bright. Uh, if, if the colour is natural, then the price is high. Obviously, if it's treated, then that brings the value down. With white diamonds, you're looking for the least colour. So with this one, there is some colour in it, but it could be a lot worse. Both diamonds are a big size, uh, especially the white diamonds. But unfortunately, in diamonds, as in life, size isn't everything. To pay for their dream bikes, Paul and Vicky want £15,000. But will their diamond rings make the grade? in London, and at head office, boss James is still less than happy about the overlend discovered on two items of jewellery. Having lost money on loan items, and they're basic items as well, I'm peed off, very peed off. 
So I'm going to send this email out to everyone to make them aware that they should be very cautious and not to overlend. Hi, it has been brought to my attention. The number of staff has been overlending, and as a direct result, we are in negative equity in terms of funds due back. Please be very cautious with respect, and all company members are accountable for loans offered on assets. Regards, James. Was that you? No, it wasn't. I know what I'm doing. When James lays down the law about overlending, which is, a, you know, he needs to remind them every so often, um, you do really notice that they become more cautious. It's James's money that we are paying out for these things, so if we happen to pay out thousands of pounds more than we should have done, then, yeah, of course he wouldn't be happy with that. As well as facilitating loans, the pawn shop also sells items for a commission. Meeting with potential buyers and showing them big items that we can't bring to store is a massive part of the business. See you in a bit. See you. Nice. Enjoy yourself. Oh, I will. James is on his way to an airfield in Yorkshire, where his client's Tiger Moth plane is hangered, ready for sale. I'm trying to put a deal together for the owner. The owner's looking for just over 70 grand and see if we can get a deal done. James is meeting potential buyer aviator Mike and his assistant Anita. How are you doing? Yeah, nice to see you, James. Right. Hi, Anita. Hi, James. Right. Very nice to meet you. Well, look, here she is. Um, she's not able to fly out today because she needs the renewal certificate, which she hasn't currently got. I do know it was manufactured in 1944 and sent out to Burma. The fabric was done in uh, 2001 and the engine's done 500 hours. So, have you owned one of these before? Yeah, that was my first aircraft, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, 300 pounds I gave for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's worth a bit more today. OK, fantastic. Well, I'll leave it with you then. Yeah. Hopefully we might be able to put a deal together. Yeah, thanks a lot. Great. Thanks. Mm. Oh, doesn't look bad, does it? I not like the look of this. These flying wires on the tail look quite good. Yeah, they're looking really good, Nick, yeah. Looking out for damage on the rappeller. See there, look, it's hit something just there, look. It's got a baggage locker, look. Let me see if I can remember. 20 pounds of baggage. 20 pounds of baggage? That's definitely a bloke's baggage hole, that one. Yeah, you can't <laughs> put your uh, golf so clubs in there, can you? It's uh, looking positive at the minute. They seem quite uh, quite interested in it. The proof of the pudding is in the, uh, in the size of the cheque that comes my way, so um, fingers crossed. Oh, look at this. Dame, Dame Vera Lynn. Dame Vera Lynn. Yep. Yes, it's nice. That's I, lovely. I think that should always be left. I mean, the more I look at this aeroplane, the more I would say it's a, you know, it's a good 8 out of 10, which is good, uh, a good number. How'd you get on? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, a, it's a good, solid aeroplane. It needs a lot of things doing to it to be able to bring it up to today's sort of public transport standards so you could actually earn some money with the aeroplane. Right. You know, it needs brakes fitting, it needs a radio putting in, it needs a transponder putting in. I just put one in my other plane, it was 3,000 quid to put it in. So all these things can start mounting up. And the problem is, of course, there's quite a few out there for sale at the moment. Okay, and what um, sort of level are they at? Well, and there's some good ones for around 60 that are ready to go, but um, I like it. I think it's a nice aeroplane. OK, so, I mean, it's just a matter of you guys going away, doing your figures and coming back to me where you see it at. Yeah, sure. We can go from there. Absolutely, yeah. That's okay. actually, well, it's been lovely meeting you yeah, both. you too, Jim. And uh, yeah. we'll speak soon. Yeah, been a lovely. Pleasure. Cheers. Well, thanks, thanks Bye. Bye. The owner's looking for just over £70,000 for it. Mike has already pointed out that it needs a few quid spent on it and there are a number of them for sale, so that could work against it, but they've gone away looking quite chirpy, so I'm quite uh, hopeful that they might come back with a figure um, and we can get a deal done. But after his research, will Mike bid for the plane and land James the five-figure sale he's been working for? In London, Lawrence is on his way to memorabilia expert Mark. He's been appraising Lord Ben and Lady Rayner's Rolling Stones signed guitar. I'm a bit dubious about it. If it's correct, you could be looking at about six to seven thousand pounds there. So I've got to get a, another opinion on this one. Mark is the expert. He's been doing it for 30 years. He is at the top of his game. How are you Lawrence, doing, mate? How are you? I've got something for you here. Okay. Where it's going to be an awful accident. All right, so this is the by Claudia. I'm not 100% sure about it, so. Okay, should we I take want a look? To get a second opinion from you, mate. You're getting ready to get excited. Am I going to be excited? Don't get excited. Don't get excited. 
So I was right. It took me about 10 seconds not to get excited over that, Lawrence. <sighs> there's, there's nothing right about it at all. You seem pretty committed on this. Mick Jagger's autograph, it's just a million miles off, mate. Yeah. The problem is, in these charity auctions, these are the targets. Yeah. Did no, no paperwork come with it? Well, it's been, it's been authenticated, isn't it? Right, it's OK. It's so hairy-fairy. It basically says, if this isn't right, we'll give you money back. Well, that means nothing. No one's name and address on it or nothing. One of those. Yeah, just so I can learn as well. What's wrong with the Mick Jagger signature? Well, if you've seen so many of them in your yeah. time, when you're looking at them week in and week out, you'd look at that and know straight away that yeah. is not on Mick Jagger. Yeah. It's like saying blue is black yeah. and black is blue. Yeah. That is not right. I mean, just to confirm, though, because, as you've taught me, that sometimes one or two signatures can be right and the rest are wrong. If I was in any doubt now, I'd be getting examples out with you yeah. and going through them like a fine tooth comb. Yeah. There's absolutely no need. OK, so you're not even undecided then on this one? No, have you got that? I think we can say that you're definitely not happy with this one. Cheers, mate. Sorry, mate. No worries. See you later. Have you got any brown tape? It might be worth more than the actual frame. <laughs> It's a fact that 90% of all memorabilia out there is fake. And even if you've got paperwork, if it's not the correct paperwork, it's not worth the paper it's written on. In Andover... You haven't messed that up, have you? No, it's perfect, don't worry. Harley Davidson fans Paul and Vicky are waiting to hear about their white and yellow diamond rings. It'd be nice to get 15-ish thousand all in. That would be fantastic. I think Vic's engagement ring is the big ticket item. That's probably going to realise us the most, I would suspect. Paul bought the engagement ring on holiday in Florida and paid $22,000 for it, which at the time was around £11,000. If we get the money we want, I'm going to get some really nice blingy parts for my bike. If it's a really good sum, then maybe I'll <laughs> let him upgrade his bike. Michael's now finished appraising the rings and is ready to report back to boss James. The yellow diamonds, it's heat treated and fracture filled. OK. Is there any other good news? <laughs> it is gold, isn't it? <laughs> to be honest, we would be able to pay more for the gold than we would the diamonds. Yeah. And then this one, the size is great. The colour actually isn't too bad, mm. but the clarity lets it down. Yeah, so this isn't going to be good news at all, Michael, because I think they were looking for around the 15 grand mark. I'm not looking forward to this. I might send her an email, actually, or, or a telegram <laughs> or something. Hello? It's James here from Prestige. Yeah, James, hi. But nice. we've, we've had a good look at the rings. The yellow diamond, uh, yeah. we'll start with that. It is a diamond of sorts, yeah. um, but unfortunately... Commercially, there's very little value it, okay. in it. You'd probably be best to put it back in your jewellery box and just keep it, to be fair. Okay. Now, the other stone mm. has got some positives um, to it. It's, yeah. it's a good size. It's um, just over three carats. So, yeah. in that yeah. respect, um, commercially, it's quite good. Mm -hmm. The only problem with it is mm -hmm. it's got quite a lot of carbon in it. Right. I'll be straight with you. I think you paid a lot of money for it. Yeah. 2007 um, is when you purchased this diamond. It was a very different market. It was pre-recession. Uh, People had plenty of money to splash around. Sure. But at the moment, we're finding that unless the stones are really good and they're really clean, they don't really command that sort of money. It's definitely a buyer's market. And if we were going to advertise it, we really wouldn't be able to give you um, much more than... £2,250, £2,500 for it. OK. And I know that might be a bit of a shock to you. All right, well, that's, that's very, very uh, candid of you. It's something we'll certainly think about rather than uh, jump straight in now and say yay or nay, if that's OK. All right, well, look, Paul, thanks for talking to me. Yeah, James, thanks for the call anyway. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Cheers, bye. Oh, that was, uh, that was difficult. Oh, he, was, look, he was took it on the chin. Knowing that Paul had to relay the bad news to his wife, I really, really felt for him. It couldn't have been an easy one. I'm sure he got a bit of stick. We were just victims of circumstance. We bought it at the wrong time. At the time we bought it is when people were willing to buy those things. But now that as we're coming out of recession, being a buyer's market, um, he thinks it'd be difficult to sell commercially. Never mind. Hey-ho, that's life. We move on. Tell me. <laughs> no, I need to find a man that's going to buy me a f decent engagement ring next time. <laughs> <laughs> At 
head office, it's been a week since James showed potential buyer Mike the Tiger Moth plane. The owner wants £70,000 for the aircraft and middleman James is hoping Mike's going to make an offer. I mean, look, this isn't an unusual situation for us to be in. We often act as a conduit between seller and buyer and that's exactly what we are in this uh, situation. At the aerodrome in Surrey, Mike's come to a decision. Prestige. Is that James? Mike, you all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Good. We've had time to think about it and uh, look at the possibility of making an offer. Um, it's ideal for someone who wants to go Sunday flying. It's all ready to go, but... Because we're very close to Gatwick. Here on the control airspace. We'd need to put a radio in as well, a transponder. Um, which is about 20 grand's worth, all in all. You need to spend a few quid on it to get it up to scratch for your purposes, then. Yeah, so I'm probably not the best buyer in the world of it. But I'd be prepared to go to... 55,000 sterling on it. OK, well, that's uh, that's not bad at all, actually. Yeah, that, I think, is a reasonable offer for it. The, I appreciate your offer. It's a little bit short of what he was looking for, so, uh, well, you know, I think he was hoping for over the 70 grand mark, so... Uh, but you never know. I shall get on to the owner and uh, see if we can get something done. It would be nice to get this one away, I must admit. OK, thanks very much indeed. Ta Cheers, take mate. care. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. But will James's client accept Mike's £55,000 bid? It may not be what he wants, but there's only one way to find out. Quarters, James is hoping he's sold the Tiger Moth plane. They're not an everyday item that we would come across. In fact, we'd never been offered one before. After hunting for a buyer for the last month, James has had an offer from Aviator Mike. It is a serious offer, but let's put the number to the owner and see if we can get a deal done. Adrian? Yes, hi James, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad, mate. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. We've got an offer on the table of fifty-five thousand pounds. Right. It's not what I was looking for, James. I know there's a few things that are doing, so I'm, I'm willing to negotiate. And, uh, maybe we can meet somewhere in between. Yeah. He has intimated to me that he's really maxed out on what he uh, what he can present with you. But look, if he changes his mind or he comes back to me. I'll be straight on to you. Perfect. OK, Adrian. Cheers, okay, mate. Adrian. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Mike put a really strong bid forward for the Tiger Moth, and I thought for a moment he just might get it, but I think the seller just wanted a little bit more, and rightly so. Ace is high. Mike, James, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Good, good. Look, I, um, Mike, I thought I'd give you a call back. I spoke to the owner. Right. And um, it's a no go, mate, to be honest with you. It's not quite what he needs, but. Uh, if anything changes, mate, or if you want to up your offer, please come back to me. If, uh, if he comes back. Uh, uh, lower figure, I'll let you know, yeah? Yeah, OK. Yeah, no, I think that's, uh, that's reasonable. Thanks, thanks very much for uh, passing the offer on to him, yeah? No problem. problem, mate. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Take care, bye. Cheers, mate. It looks like we won't be the proud owners of the aeroplane on this occasion. Hopefully, he'll get a good price for it. It's a very nice aeroplane. Oh, dear, that was a bit disappointing, Joe. What's that? The Tiger yeah. Moth. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we didn't get it sold, unfortunately. Shame, innit? My God, you're not very good lately, are you? <laughs> no, not lately. Rubbish. I thought you had the Midas touch. I did. I used to. He put a bid forward. It was quite a strong bid but he wasn't quite there with it. It's not as bad as you're making it sound. You found a buyer. I did find a buyer. And they put a, quite a strong bid forward, so you have still done a good job. I've still done a good job. You have? Yes. But it's not your fault if the owner doesn't want to take that. Do you feel better now? I'm all right now. <laughs> Thanks for that. There you go. Can I take one of your cards? You can, and keep plugging <laughs> away, yeah? Thank you. <laughs> Car salesman Adrian has arrived at a golf club in Surrey for a test drive with James. 
first thing this morning. I was a bit apprehensive, but actually now I've arrived here, I feel fine. I'm 95% sure he'll advance me the money I need against it after driving it. Adrian needs a loan today against his Mercedes to complete a business deal that will fund a new start in Colombia. This is a, a once in a lifetime opportunity and I need the money to fulfill my dream. With James always stressing to staff about not over lending, he wants to give Adrian's car a thorough check before agreeing to the loan. Adrian wants around eight grand secured against his vehicle. I do like convertibles and especially Mercs. I mean, I've had a few uh, in my time. This one's a later model, but it's only done low mileage. Can't wait to see it. Hi, James. How are you nice doing? Nice to meet you. And you? Yeah. You all right? Yeah, fine. Yeah. So this is it, is it? Yeah, it's a nice car. Well, let's have a look around. Let's see what we've got. I suppose it's fully loaded, isn't it? Yeah, it's got about £8,000 worth of extras. Eight grand. New, yeah. Mind you, that only buys you an ashtray from Merc. The wheels need a little bit of attention. Generally, it's uh, it's very nice. Sun's right. out. Perhaps I could take it out for a little test yeah, drive. I'll send you a postcard from the border. Yeah, fine. I'll just take your Range Rover. Nice bit of sunshine. You're not going over 125, are you? Oh, you never know. Because the drive is restricted to 125. <laughs> See you Thursday. <laughs> Beautiful old thing, yeah, it's nice, lovely nick. Drives really well, smooth, responsive. Yeah, feels great. Oh, it's got a bit of poke as well, oh, I like that. The golfers won't like it much. Oh yeah, it goes nicely. The Merc was great. I mean, it drove really, really nicely, as I expected it would. Very odd sensation to see somebody driving off into the distant sunset. I don't think anybody's ever driven any of my cars. It's not new, it's an 05. They're a little bit dated, but in terms of its condition, it doesn't come much better than this. It's all about the money. I mean, does it add up to an eight grand loan? How'd you get on? Not bad, actually. Shall I take your old thing home? No. <laughs> oh, right. With the car being 10 years old, I had to weigh up the value and work out could I actually lend against it. Eight grand, is that what you really need for it? Because yeah, if you do eight, we got a deal. I'll be straight with you, Adrian. Look, I'll be much more comfortable with seven, but I suppose you, you need the eight, don't you? I need the eight, yeah. It's a little bit heavy for me. Yeah. But... I'm going to go the extra mile on it. I do like it. It's a lovely thing. I think we've got a deal, mate. All right, mate. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. it's um, been a pleasure to meet you. I'm sure you're going to come back and collect it. Well, oh, listen, <laughs> there isn't any chance I'm letting you have that for that. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of pressure off. Uh, probably relieved is the word. And I can crack on, mate, can I, tomorrow? Start a new chapter. One step closer to Columbia. Today's been great. I mean, it's the sun shining. I was driving around in a convertible. So really, it's the feel-good factor. Probably pumped it up the extra grand. So uh, I probably overlent on it. James is always on at staff. Don't overlend, get the figures right. But as soon as something shiny or a boy's toy turns up, that rule for him seems to go out the window. And that's why there's a motorbike out the back and a horse and armor out the front. What I don't really want is people bringing things to me on sunny days and let me drive around in their convertible um, for half hour because uh, they might get the better of me. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. It's bed and rainer, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Nice to meet you. I was about to say, I'm Lawrence, I haven't met you. In Hatton Garden, Lord Ben and Lady Rayner have arrived for news on their two designer handbags and Rolling Stones signed guitar. I would like to think that the two bags together would be worth at least 6,000. Yeah, I'm worried that you're pouring water and not champagne. <laughs> Actually, I have got Prosecco at the back here. Right. <laughs> we sit with bated breath. Um, so, OK, I've done a little bit of research. Um, I'm happy to say that I have got someone in place for the orange uh, Hermes. Right. Now, seeing that I've got somebody for the orange one, I can offer you for both of them eight and a half thousand. Really? That's good, isn't it? Wow. That's a lot of money, isn't it, for a couple of old bags? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So that's the deal, then? That's the deal. Excellent. 
Now this, I mean, is an amazing piece. And when Claudia told me about it, I was very, very excited. I mean, you usually see the four signatures of the, of the main band. Yep. If you get any of the others, a Bill Wyman, you could actually act another two grand to it. So that's why it's quite rare. So you're looking there at about an eight grand guitar. Really? An eight grand guitar. Wow. Now, we're looking at a very expensive item. I had to get a second opinion. How much did you actually pay for it? Well, I believe mm -hmm. that I got a good buy. Yeah. If it is indeed genuine. It was two and a half grand. Two and a half grand you paid for it. We well, right, if it is real, that would be a fantastic amount. To this doesn't sound to good. <laughs> OK. Um, unfortunately... No. It's not real. You're joking. What? They're not real signatures? The signatures aren't right. I wasn't sure. I cannot sure. believe that. I looked at them and I wasn't <gasps> sure. You are joking. When uh, Lawrence told them the news of the guitar, I mean, Ben and Raina's face, I couldn't believe it. Ben was really, really shocked, and I think he was actually quite annoyed. I must admit, as soon as uh, Mark saw it, he, yeah. he just looked at his face and said, oh, I just looked wow. at it. Really? Our guys, if they go, no, it's no. Well, I'll obviously be relying on their opinions yeah. uh, when I go back and smash it over his head. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> so, um, rock and roll style, he can have some of that. You know, I, obviously, I will be taking it back. Yeah. On the night, the difference went to charity. Yeah. So I'm very happy for the difference to go to charity. Yeah. And that they refund me the element that they charge for the guitar. Yeah. So that would be my intention. Better to know the facts, I think. Yeah. I mean, in all honesty, Ben bought this in all good faith. He bought it at a charity event, he bought it with a certificate of authenticity, but on this occasion, it just wasn't right, the item. Well, that's yeah, it then. So... Well, thank you both very much indeed for your time. Oh, really nice to meet you. Likewise. Cheers, Lawrence. <laughs> Look after yourself. <laughs> thank you. Well, it could have gone better. Um, Lawrence just, uh, just shattered my dreams of becoming a global memorabilia trader. Well, you know, in this sort of business, I suppose you deliver good and bad news, but at the end of the day, it's um, a lot nicer given good news rather than bad. At least we had the bags to fall back on. Exactly. <laughs> so I was hoping for 6,000 for the bags, and I'm so pleased because Claudia's offered me 8,500, and I am going shopping.